On today's episode. Tesla to reintroduce axed regenerative braking setting. Tesla FSD renders lane markings, even when none are on the road. And Tesla gives latest update on its game-changing 4680 battery cell. Tesla will reintroduce a previously axed regenerative braking setting for its drivers, which can slow the vehicle without having to apply the brake pedal, storing the energy to be applied later, resulting in a boost in range. The issue with regenerative braking is that it is not a present feature in many cars. So some drivers are not familiar with how it works, its advantages, or the particularly different feel that comes with operating a vehicle outfitted with it. Tesla introduced regenerative braking in its vehicles to increase range by storing the kinetic energy generated from braking for later use and to help certain vehicle parts last longer. Like brake pads. For example, it can help the lifespan of these braking components last more than 50% longer. With the introduction of the feature, Tesla had two options, low and normal. But in newer vehicles, normal was the only setting available because it was the more efficient of the two and contributed to greater range contribution and less wear to braking components due to less use. Now it seems Tesla is looking to reintroduce the low regenerative braking option in its vehicles, according to not a Tesla app. Users who were accidentally given access to changes temporarily notice the reintroduction of the low regenerative braking mode which seems to indicate Tesla plans to roll out the feature to newer cars that have not had access to it yet. With the addition of the feature, Tesla is allowing drivers to cater their driving experience to their own preferences. Regenerative braking is an advantage many electric and hybrid vehicle drivers can access. It undoubtedly assists in the longevity of braking components and increased range in EVs and gas mileage in hybrids. Regenerative braking is a significant feature of electric vehicles, allowing drivers to slow down without using the brake pedal while recapturing energy and extending the life of braking components. This system can increase the range of the vehicle and extend the lifespan of braking mechanisms. Tesla's regenerative braking system uses the electric motor to create resistance, slowing the vehicle down and capturing kinetic energy. This energy is then converted into electrical energy and fed back into the battery, increasing the vehicle's range. The regenerative braking system can be activated simply by lifting the foot off the accelerator. With the strength of the braking force and energy capture determined by the extent to which the accelerator is eased. During regenerative braking, Tesla vehicles ensure the activation of brake lights. Even when the traditional brake pedal is not being used. The brake lights are turned on based on the vehicle's rate of deceleration. To check if your brake lights are on, you can look at the Tesla display screen where the car illustration will show the brake lights is lit up when they are active. This feature ensures that other drivers know the Tesla vehicle's deceleration, improving overall road safety. The reintroduction of the low Regen mode offers drivers the opportunity to adjust to the unique braking experience of electric vehicles, gradually transitioning from traditional ICE vehicles. However, it is essential to note that using the low Regen mode may result in reduced range and increased brake usage making it a trade-off between driver comfort and overall efficiency. Tesla is also planning a major overhaul to its UI in the coming weeks, as it has already started shipping software update 2023.12 to select employees, introducing various interface improvements aimed toward customization and ease of access. According to a video from at Ray4 Tesla on Twitter, the video shows a Tesla driving on a road with no lane markings, What's interesting about this video is that the Tesla visualization is showing a middle lane marking about where there would be one if it was painted on the road. At first glance, this may not seem like a big deal, but if you really look at it, it is a big deal and here's why. A Tesla vehicle needs to be able to drive itself anywhere in order to reach a level where autonomous vehicles are driving all over the street. In this case, Tesla's FSD software is deducing where the yellow line would be on the road if it was painted there. This is similar to what a human does when they drive on a road like this, you stay to the right and on that half of the road. Even better, the software draws its own yellow line to make it more clear and is probably using some kind of math equation to do so. Tesla used to position the vehicle near the middle of the road in this case when it was on a side road or on marked road. But now it is doing a better job staying off the center of the road. This will ease people who would get nervous by a Tesla driving near the center of the road. What's happening in this case is that Tesla FSD is extrapolating the lanes based on the width of the road, it has to be doing that and using the width it sees and dividing it by 2. 
many places have faded or no lane markings, and Tesla needs to be able to do this everywhere. Elon Musk has done two things this year. First, he has bet Tesla, the entire company, on a fleet of autonomous Tesla vehicles being turned on at some point in the future. Elon believes this will be by the end of 2023. And he has promised this numerous times without delivery. Like any person who tends to be optimistic, they aren't always going to be right on timing but the optimism will keep them going until the objective is achieved. I see a Tesla being able to drive better than an average person by the end of 2023 and over the next few years, being able to drive much better than the average person. By 2027, Tesla vehicles should be superhuman at driving, and it should be as important to use FSD and self-driving software as it is to wear a seat belt in a car. Tesla has released a very detailed update on its 4680 battery cell program, which is expected to be critical for its future electric vehicles. The 4680 battery cell format has taken the industry by storm since Tesla unveiled its own cell strategy at Battery Day in 2020. The automaker claimed a potential to reduce battery cost by over 50% with the new design, it has been trying to bring it to volume production since, but it has run into some bottlenecks. In a conference call following the release of its Q1 2023 financial results, Tesla gave a detailed update about its 4680 battery cell production. Drew Bullino, Tesla's senior VP of engineering, said about the 4680 cell. On battery day, we established a cost-down roadmap through 2026 across five areas of effort. There was the cell design we discussed, anode and cathode materials, the structural pack concept, and the cell factory itself. We've been making progress across all these aspects since then. For the cell factory, for the Texas 4680 factory, we are part way through building and commissioning and installing and operating. We'll be 70% lower capex per gigawatt hour than typical cell factories when fully ramped in line with what we described on battery day. And we're continuing to further pursue densification and investment reduction opportunities in future factory buildouts like in Nevada. Tesla is producing 4680 cells at its pilot plant in Fremont, but it is expected to reach higher. Volume production at Gigafactory Texas, which is the cell factory Bellino is talking about here. He continued. On the cell design, we're in production with not only the first generation tablet cell we unveiled on battery day but a second more manufacturable version in Texas today. On the cathode material side. We have a number of activities underway for the battery day roadmap. For lithium, our Corpus Christi lithium refinery breaks ground this May. Our goal is to start commissioning portions of the facility for the end of the year. The refinery uses the sulfate-free refining process with reduced process costs, no acid or caustic reagents, lower embodied energy. It actually produces a beneficial byproduct that can be repurposed in construction materials. The executive also gave a more specific update on its cathode factory at Gigafactory, Texas. We discussed all of these concepts on battery day. Same with cathode precursor, we've successfully demonstrated a lower process cost, zero waste water precursor process that we described on battery day at both lab and pilot scale and are on the detailed design phase for incorporating this technology into the front end of our Austin cathode facility. On cathode production, we are 50% equipment and 75% utilities installed at our new cathode building in Austin with our goal to begin dry and wet commissioning this quarter and next quarter with a target to produce first material before the end of the year. The 4680 cell also enables Tesla's new structural battery pack design. The Model Y in production at Gigafactory Texas is the first one to feature this radically different chassis and battery pack design, but Tesla's future vehicles, including the upcoming Cybertruck, are expected to feature this design. Bullino gave an update on that front. Structural pack. We saw big improvements with pack manufacturing with the 4680 cell on the structural pack concept, 50% lower capex and 66% smaller factory with the same output in gigawatt hours per year. We do believe structural as a concept is a good one. It's simpler. We'll continue to structurally load the cells and use the pack as the floor of the vehicle while iterating the design to closer to be level execution of this A-level architecture in future programs. And zooming out for the 4680 team Q1 was all about cost and quality. The executive shared some details about improvements in production output this quarter and focused on reducing costs going forward in preparation for Cybertruck volume production. We made significant improvements in both areas. On Texas production, we increased 50% quarter over quarter, through yields increased 12% and peak rate increased by 20% and through yields improved by 20%. 
Altogether, the team accomplished a 25% reduction in COGS over the quarter and we are on track to achieve steady state cost targets over the next 12 months. And going forward for the rest of the year, the priority one is to yield in cost for the 4680 program as we steadily ramp production ahead of Cybertruck next year. This is the most detailed update on Tesla's 4680 battery program and could indicate that Tesla is starting to get out of the woods. We recently reported that the automaker was having some issues with the dry electrode in the 4680, but it recently hired a new expert to help. Please don't forget to give the video a thumbs up if you liked it, as that enable us to reach more people. And please subscribe to our channel for more like this. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in the next. Thanks for watching.